Welcome to Balanced Health. I'm Shirley Rose and this is Joe Costello. You know, we've all heard about how important exercise is and about the many health benefits it gives. But with all the different systems, equipment and workout products being pushed, it can get overwhelming. What type of exercise should we be doing and how long do we have to exercise? Do we have to buy some special piece of equipment? Well, today we're going to answer these questions and explain why everyone should exercise regularly. And to help us tackle this topic, Dr. Terry Smith has joined us in the studio. Dr. Smith is a chiropractic physician, certified strength and conditioning specialist who teaches his patients that exercise is a key element to a healthy life. Thanks so much for joining us today, Dr. Smith. Sure, Dr. You know, Smith. I have lots of questions for you later. Dr. Smith, but first it's time for one of our favorite segments, Nutrition in the News. Joe, what's in the news? Well, it's about exercise, Shirley. Studies are now showing that people who exercise are not only healthier, but people who incorporate resistance training have lower levels of triglycerides, a seemingly ever more important number on your blood test. Studies show that people who incorporate resistance training at least three days per week for 30 minutes per day have a better total cholesterol to triglyceride ratio than those who do not. Now, this ratio is considered as or more important than your total cholesterol. Dr. Mm. Smith, we can kick right in with that. I mean, I, I think we're really seeing the difference in the way that we look at cholesterol readings on blood tests and how uh, exercise relates to cholesterol and blood tests. Yeah, total cholesterol itself is not by any means an absolute number that you know means bad or good. It's the ratio between the independent particles floating through your bloodstream. Uh, you mentioned triglycerides, but another important uh, ratio is the total cholesterol to HDL. Uh, ratio, which H is, everyone knows H means healthy, so HDL cholesterol is H means the healthy part of your cholesterol. So you take your total divided by the HDL, mm. and if you get a number below four, you're pretty well protected. That's a good indication. So a lot of people come to our office with 220, 240 cholesterol, but as long as that HDL is up there, 70, 80, 90, they're really well protected within the ratio. Well, that was confusing for me because mm -hmm. I thought you just added the numbers together and it was supposed to be like under 200, and I mine was like right on, at 200, and I was worried about this, but I found that it was because my healthy cholesterol was higher, so, yeah. so it was a little confusing for me. So, Well, if you understand some things, some parts of the cholesterol bring it to the liver, some bring it from the liver to the oh. part of the body, so there's this kind of ebb and flow kind of relationship that needs to occur, not just an absolute number. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, exercise is, we all know that exercise is a good way to bring your bad cholesterol down. Uh, I mean, we, we've heard some dramatic stories about that, and, and through the years, exercise has changed a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. we know that we we, we, we all need it, but, but what's, why is it so important and why is there so much emphasis on it today? Well, it's kind of, it's kind of weird because a lot of the school systems in the country actually are putting less importance towards PE programs and stuff mm. like that when we know that all diseases across the board are on the rise. Obesity, diabetes are taking over this country. Mm. I mean, when are we going to put an, you know, put an end to this? That's why there's uh, LA Fitnesses, Lifetimes, all these gyms yeah. opening up around every street corner now. You can find a, a place to work out. At. Yeah. But, but with all the obese children, is it just strictly a budget thing that they're, that they're reducing the exercise programs? We all know kids sit at computers more and, and TVs more, so why are they doing that? Do you think, I mean, is it just a budget thing? Or? Well, I try. I think it's because they want to control our children's minds more and keep them in school more and continue to do what they want to do with them because the school day is no shorter. Mm -hmm. I also think that one of the reasons why, just to add to what Dr. Smith said, we exercise is so much more important now. When my grandparents were, say, coming in the Chicago area and making a way of life for themselves, my grandmother used to walk to the market every day, you know. Yeah. She used to get fresh food sure. every day. My grandfather walked to work. I mean, the, and, and the list just goes on and on. There well, was I'm, no I'm remote controls. Rural, I'm from a rural area. You they really worked, did some walking. Yeah, they worked in the fields every day. I mean, they did hard, back-breaking labor every day, so exercise wasn't a problem. Yeah, the lifestyle then. was so different. We didn't have remote controls. We didn't have power windows. I mean, right. I think it was, I think exercise because what we want to do is dispel the rumor I think with our viewers that you know exercise is all about money and no. about equipment and about no. you know gym club memberships and that's why it's necessary now and it wasn't before I think our lifestyle has dramatically changed my boys I love them and they're, and they're both you know willing to get out there and do stuff but mm -hmm. if I let them sit at that computer time just passes mm -hmm. you know well one of the big objections I get when people come in the office and I say you gotta exercise and I prefer right away first thing in the morning when you get up for special you know weight loss purposes and the people always give an objection is I already get up at 4.30 I already get up at 5 o'clock when do I have time to go to the gym and I say just leave your house and walk 
seven minutes away from your house and walk seven minutes back. That's at least 14 good minutes of getting your heart pumping in the morning. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just got to find other ways of doing it besides going to the health club. We can do it right in our house. That's, can do true. That, that's a very good point. And, and exercise can be fun. I mean, most of us just hate to be on the treadmill. I mean, it's boring. But exercise can be fun, like, you know, sports and dancing. And, you know, sometimes when I, <laughs> I run up and down the stairs a few times, you know, I mean. What? And that's enough. And that's but as far as programs go with that, if somebody is going to embark on an exercise program, mm -hmm. what kind of frequency do we, you, you, you see these things 20 minutes a day, once a week. You see these things, it must be an hour a day. Yeah. The government has recently recommended 45 to, uh, minutes to an hour a day mm -hmm. of, cons uh, of asserting yourself in mm -hmm. exercise. What, what's your take on that? I would love it if everybody did one hour per day. And mm -hmm. everyone always asks, what's the best exercise to do? Maximize the benefit. I say the one that you're going to do every day and be happy with it, enjoy it, so to speak. Even if it's just gardening, I'd rather somebody be happy gardening than doing something they hate with all the nasty chemicals going through their system. So mm -hmm. I'd rather them just do something basic, but they love that they will do every single day. Mm -hmm. But 45 to an hour every day would be awesome. Okay, well then we get these words like anaerobic, anaerobic. Mm -hmm. yeah, and well, then people think, well, but if I'm gardening, I'm not getting either of those two things. What are those two things? What is anaerobic and what is aerobic? And how do we experience them in different forms of exercise? Kind of old terms in exercise physiology, we, you know, the more for advanced uh, people, but just a spectrum. Aerobic means uh, very kind of light, easy going exercise. Anaerobic means the end of the spectrum where you're exerting yourself so much that your body is almost mm. holding its breath mm. to perform the exercise like big power strength lifting. Training, that kind no, of thing. Well more than strength training like you're talking like holding your breath all bearing out to try oh. and move something where you're holding your breath or like I'll a do that. Wind, <laughs> wind sprints where you're holding your breath for like three four five seconds you know wow. for a little bit but aerobic is you know just general cardio so to speak mm -hmm. and from a spectrum of you know basically sitting on the couch is aerobic exercise you know and then playing video games is, burns a little bit more calories mm -hmm. than sitting on the couch and then you get into walking and jogging and you know running so basically the intensity that you feel your your body working at is the spectrum of aerobic to anaerobic in which you almost have to stop talking until you're mm -hmm. holding your breath okay. so that's the spectrum in a in a nutshell there Joe you know a hint I think we can give our viewers today should we, we advise so many people at Kylea with this thing when they when they talk about getting started you know and like you said you hear different excuses and some people you excuse sounds like a mean word some people they just can't get themselves motivated so use use whatever word you want but one of the things I, I tell people to do is you can buy the most inexpensive treadmill that's out there um, to start with mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just start walking fast on it put it on some type of an incline start walking fast on it and either put a TV in front of you or put you know an iPod generation that we have these mm -hmm. days you know yeah. uh, you take your iPod put your headphones in there and select songs that get you going mm -hmm. like on my iPod I have different um, you know, me being me, I got one from the 80s and the 90s, but I have different groups of music that I use for different workouts. And when, by, so by doing that, the music motivates you, it gets your mind off the fact that you're walking on this treadmill, because people give you the old, I don't want to, I feel like a gerbil thing, you know, mm -hmm. I can't stand being on the well, treadmill. It yeah. is boring, so you got to take your mind off of it. But what, what happens though, is that you wind up getting to a place where not only is it not boring, you start looking forward to that next workout. Mm. But using the old analogy of crawl, walk, and run, I guess crawling is probably yeah. not a good thing to start off with, but you start off with something like walking on a treadmill right. and you generally increase it. The experience itself will bring you to a level of wanting to do more. Mm -hmm. And That's once you true. start feeling, you know, you sweat when you open, you know, you, you sweat, your uh, skin opens up, it eliminates toxins. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're done, you shower, you feel good. There's, mm -hmm. there's nothing like oh. it. We're going to touch more on that when yeah, we come we back. Yeah, we are. And what, what, what kind of exercise does burn the most calories, though? I mean, we are all interested in, <clears> you know, <throat> keeping our weight down. And Well, if you want to say straight calories, the more intense the exercise, the more calories you burn, straight and simple. A lot of people want to say, you know, what burns more fat? And this is a, a really interesting question because the body will choose and want to burn fat almost on a regular basis as much as it can. The more intense the exercise becomes, the more actually that you happen to tap into your glucose reserves. So the ratio of fat to carbohydrate reduces as you get more intense in your exercise. And this is information that I've known for about 15 years and you know as a graduate in school we used to study this stuff but people still think that being in this heart zone of 65 percent of your heart rate max is the best fat burning mm. zone. It is not. Okay, I mean, that's if, you, good news. if you think of who the best bodies in the sports world in, in, in 
are is the sprinters. It's the thoroughbreds. Yeah, yeah, these yeah. guys have the least amount of body fat, the most amount of muscle mass, and they don't run for 45 minutes to an hour on, on the treadmill. They just do sprints. Well, yeah. more about that later, but for more information on today's subject or nutrition in the news, go to TLN.com and click on Shows and then go to Balanced Health. Or to get a copy of today's show, give us a call at the number on your screen. And after the break, no pain, no gain? We've all heard it, but is it true? When we return, we'll find out, so stay with us.